Hi gang, welcome back to Chef to Chef. I'm Don Hens with the Martin Brothers and today we're going to go over our knife skills. One of the foundations to the culinary arts. There are a lot of different knives out there. Let's go over the different types real quick and take a look at what they are and what they do. This, my beloved chef's knife. I use this for just about everything. Uh, a lot of people are intimidated by a large blade like this, but if you can get comfortable with it, a large chef knife will be your best friend. And they range from different sizes, 8 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, whatever you're comfortable with, but this is a great utility knife. The serrated knife. The serrated knife is used a lot of times for frozen foods and bread. Okay, it's got the grooves inside of it, and it's something that you probably need to replace on a regular basis because it's kind of a difficult uh, knife to sharpen. The boning knife. Now they come in flexible and firm blades. Uh, flexible knives, uh, boning knives are used for filleting fish and this type of thing. This is for uh, cleaning meats and getting into uh, areas where bones are and things like that. Paring knife, great for small cuts, dicing shallots and things like that. And also for doing little decorations and garnishes for your food. All right. Now we've talked briefly about the different types of knives. Fundamentally, these are simple. These are really all you need in your arsenal to accomplish anything you pretty much need to do in your kitchen on any given day. The next key component, how to hold our knives. Very, very, very important. Now, I like to hold my knife like this. Get a good comfortable grip, fingers around the blade, and gently wrap it around here, okay? This is not a baseball bat, it's not an axe. We're not looking to take anybody out, we're just looking to cut our food, all right? Give some beautiful cuts, beautiful designs, and cut it to the proper size for its cooking time. This hand is crucial. This is the hand that always seems to get cut because there's nothing in it except for our food and every now and then our fingers get in the way. We want to avoid that and there's a very simple way to do it. Let me grab this tomato and kind of give you a visual of, of how we want to keep our hand held while we're cutting our fruits, vegetables, meats, and anything else. We want to make the letter C, kind of like Sesame Street. Can you remember the letter C? Come on and say it with me now, gang. All right, now we've got our letter C. We're going to place the letter C on top of our food. As you can see, I've got my fingers bent in, but they're also straight uh, to the face here, and we can use this as a guide to control the width and thicknesses of our cuts. Our thumb is in the back here and will work as an anchor to hold our food in place. And we will slide slowly, and we will slowly just slide our fingers back as we make our cuts until we get to the end of the product. Okay? Another thing to think about with a knife. A knife is a saw, essentially. When we see people pushing food down, push the knife down on the food, okay, they're tearing the fibers of the food. They're bruising it. They're taking away from the beauty of their cuts. What we want to do is gently saw back and forth. A good sharp knife will saw back and forth very cleanly through just about anything. So remember, keep your knife sharp too and use the sawing motion with your fingers out of the way on the other hand. Now it's crucial that you have a sharp knife, all right? Remember, Sharp knives cut through food, dull knives will cut through you. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. We're going to grab our tomato. With a sharp blade, the proper hold, and the sawing motion, we should cut through our tomato no problem. But, let's say we've got a dull blade. We're going to use the back of our knife here as that demo piece. What's happening? Well, look, the knife doesn't want to go through the food. If I really put some pressure on it, what will happen? My knife will slide over, roll, and have just enough pressure to cut into me as opposed to cutting in the food that it was intended for. So remember, sharp knife, proper holding technique, saw back and forth. We'll go right through that product every time. One of the big curiosities that we have about using our knives is cutting the onion. You see the chefs on TV, they blow right through the onions, brrr, just like that. You have slices, you have julienne, you have your small dice, and they make them come out just perfect every time at lightning speed. Well, I'd like to show you exactly how you can do that as well. With a little time and practice, you'll be looking just like Emerald. All right, let's get this onion cut. We've got the sprout side over here, and the stem over here. What we want to do is completely remove the stem. We want to keep the sprout somewhat intact, but remove the roughest part. Cut it in half. Now this is for a julienne or a dice. We want to peel that first outer layer. And then I like to go in one more. Let me show you why. 
that skin right there, not so good for chewing. And that first layer has plenty of extra in there. All right, now we're going to dice this one. We're going to julienne one and dice the other. Let's do a dice here. We're going to take our knives, our chef knife, using our letter C. We're going to cut three quarters of the way into the knife, cutting toward the sprout in the back. The reason we leave it intact in the back, so it doesn't slip and slide. If we were to cut this off, there would be nothing holding it all together. We might get loose during cutting and slide and cut a finger. So that's what we want to avoid. It's already been cut across this way, naturally. So at this point, we just slide it this way and go for the cut. Quick, easy, efficient. Now we want to do our julienne cut. We'll go ahead and cut that sprout end off and cut all the way through. If you notice, I go back and forth, okay, creating that sawing motion. Don't just press down. Once your onion gets to a certain point, it may become unstable. We don't want this to fall and get cut. So we'll roll it over and finish it up. Voila, quick and easy dice and julienne of onion. There are numerous styles of knife cuts out there and it's imperative that you practice on a regular basis to become proficient at all of them. A great way to practice, grab a potato. You can practice your dice, your cube, your julienne, all kinds of different types of uh, knife cuts. You can practice on a potato. It's an inexpensive way to do it, and the texture of the potato really lends well to how the knife feels against most other foods. Let's go ahead and show you a few examples. All right, let's take our potato that we're going to practice on to do some of our basic knife cuts. One of the things I like to do right away, again, we've got a good grip on our knife. We've got our letter C. We're going to anchor our food. Cut a safe base. Okay, now we won't be rocking and sliding back and forth. So let's cut some slices. From our slices, we can cut thin matchstick style julienne. We can cut a thick baton cut style julienne. We can cut cubes. And then again, we'll cut some more slices because from those cuts, going into the julienne, we'll get our dice. So we've taken and got some slices, then we'll julienne our slices. And go back across and we have our dice. Petite versions of the cube cut. Now not often will you have the need for a small cut potato, but again this is to practice. You'll cut tomatoes, peppers, and things like that to make a nice small edible garnish to add to your plates. Hey, let's have a little bit of fun with our food right now. Got a Roma tomato here. You know it'd be kind of cute? We could carve this into a rose, put it on a plate. Can you imagine that coming to your table? The girl you're with, the special friend. That special occasion brought to another level because a tomato was cut into a rose. Wow, how exciting is that? Let me show you how to do that real quick. We're going to start. The stem is at the bottom. Smooth piece at the top. We're going to take our paring knife. Just gently shake it back and forth using our sawing motion. Cut that outer skin off. Let's follow the contour of the tomato. Okay. 
Remember, this isn't a race. Take your time to do this. Just cut around the bottom there. Save this for soup, salad, sauce. And now take where we began and twist it into itself. Roll it up. And place this on the bottom, flip it over. You've got a beautiful little tomato rose. You know, a lot of people use peppers as garnish and throw them into other dishes. Peppers are expensive, and it's really, really important that we use this product carefully, and knife skills really come into play at this point. And there are parts of the pepper that really aren't overly appetizing. So we're going to show you how to get into it, cut into it, and get some really beautiful cuts. Well, we've got this beautiful pepper. We're going to take our pepper, and when you're working with these peppers, a lot of times you're looking for clean lines, clean cubes, things like that, because they're used as an edible garnish. What we want to do to get a really nice square uh, dice or julienne, I go for, cut the ends right off to begin with. Okay. I'll show you what to do with that in just a moment. We'll cut a slit in the side here and roll it out. And cut into that membrane just a little bit. Cut that in half. Wipe down our table again so we have a clean surface to work off of. So now we've got this squared up slice here. Then I go in and I want to cut some of this membrane out of there. I just think it throws the color and the texture of the pepper off. Now you can dice this up and you can take this, throw it in some chicken stock, make a roasted pepper sauce or yellow pepper sauce, whatever color, flavor pepper you're doing, but save that as a base for some sauce, it's something that will be pureed. Now if we want to take this and do a julienne, I'd like to square it up, get our letter C and pull the knife through it. These are very nice little salad garnishes. Those strips could be put into the center of a piece of chicken and rolled up for a roulade so you have some color and texture in there as well. And then if we want to dice them, which would make a great garnish for our salad here, same technique, cutting a julienne. About halfway through, we'll pull this away. And that sawing motion. Now this small cut is called the Brenois cut. It's a quarter inch by quarter inch dice. Used for finishing and garnishing work. You know, a great way to signature some of your items giving your vegetables a unique look and a unique cut. Let's go over the celery and show you how to throw a bias cut to give you an Asian look, a square cut to give you more an American look. All right, now we're going to take our celery. We need to wash it. We're going to pull a few stems off and we'll show you a few different cuts. Okay, now that we've got our celery clean, let me show you a couple of the fun things we can do with it. A lot of times you see in Asian cooking, Asian restaurants, they use a long bias cut. And you get the idea of that's you know, the Chinese style, Asian style, based on the way the vegetables are cut with the sharp points. And that's how you get that. You just set your celery down and cut across, getting points, sharp points on either end. And you get these beautiful long pointed kind of sticks, if you will. Now, for your classic uh, American dishes, you're going to see this in pot roast and things like that. We just go for the flat square cut. Based on your cooking time, you'll want to cut them larger or smaller. Larger for long cooking time, smaller for shorter cooking times. 
You know there are some tricky vegetables out there. The avocado is one of them. We want to make beautiful slices. Sometimes we're fighting with the outer skin. We're going to use our knife to come out with the perfect slice or to do a quick dice to cube it out and get it scooped out so we can make some great guacamole or avocado salad. Let's show you how to do that right now. All right, we're going to get into our paring knife here. We've got the avocado. Avocados go great on sandwiches, things like that. We're going to take our paring knife and cut around the seed. Twist it open. Look at that. Okay. Take our seed out of there. And if we want to have some really nice slices, what we will do is get a little cut on the end here and start to peel around our avocado. You need to make sure your avocados are ripe or they won't peel, or if they do peel, they'll fall apart in your hand. We seem to have lucked out and got a very nice one today. Alright, avocado is also known as nature's butter because of its texture. So we want to get a nice avocado fan for a dish. Again, using our letter C. I like to use a small knife for this because everything here is, the avocado is so delicate. There you go. That would look great on a salad, garnish the sandwich. Now, if we want to take and make some guacamole, some avocado salad, the easiest way to cut it would be to leave it inside the shell, cut lines, just following the outside, and then go back across. So we've got this cubed avocado held safely in its shell. We just simply scoop it out, and it's diced and ready to go for us. Very, very quick, very convenient. Have you ever heard of an Orange Supreme? We're going to take and peel this orange, cut out just the meats of it, and make a beautiful edible garnish, something that will be great on dessert or in a salad. I've cut a safe base here. We're going to use our fillet knife, clean all the skin off, peel the outside, This is a nice technique in our healthcare environment because a lot of the parts of the orange in here are difficult to chew. So by just taking out the very fine edible meats, using that on a plate, somebody can really enjoy the best part of the orange without any dining difficulty. Take our knife and in between here, cut just the meats of the fruit out in the segments. You can see it doesn't take a lot of effort. Again, it's good to have a sharp knife. We've got some cream puffs here. I'll show you just kind of how we might do that. Lay our segments around. It's really going to bring this dessert to life visually and flavor-wise. Take and do a little drizzle, some white chocolate sauce. And we've just taken a few cream puffs and turned them into a really nice dessert and we can charge a premium for them. One of the challenges we sometimes face is working with melons and things like that. I brought a cantaloupe today. We're going to show you how to peel up seven sides, take it out, pull out the insides, and do a really nice slicing technique for displays and breakfast buffets and things of that nature. We want to cut the ends off. And what we really want to try to do is get seven sides, seven equal sided sides. Get as close as you can. Get your knife into there and just follow the contour of the fruit. Sawing motion. 
Take your time. Now, for the kind of fruit displays I like to do, as opposed to cutting this in cubes, let me show you a fun and unique technique. Going to cut that in half. We're going to pull the seeds out. Okay, now we have it clean inside. We're going to lay it flat. We're going to take our letter C here. And it's not a race here. Take your time, but slicing through across, doing thin slices as opposed to cubes. That way we can have some control over the presentation. Try to get the widths as similar as possible so you have consistency in the cut. There. We get a plate over. We can show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Now that we have this sliced, we have control over giving it some direction and presentation. We can bend it, give some points. There. Kind of a unique presentation for the cantaloupe. You know, we all work with lettuce. And coming into difficult economic times, one of the more popular options is always going to be iceberg. It's got lots of body and very neutral in flavor, so it will carry the other ingredients well. Um, but we're going to show you. You can cube it, you can shred it, all kinds of different things you can do with it. And we're going to go over that right now. When we're dealing with our iceberg lettuce, you need to remove the stem. I like to take. Give it a push, you can pull that stem right out. Now let's get into our cuts. We're going to do cubed with half, shredded with another. Remove the dead and excess leaves, or the ones that just aren't the most attractive. We want to serve only the best product to our customers. Now let's do a quick shred. It's going to go right into our technique. With our fingers back, our thumb in the back of the guide. Notice all these cuts at no time are my fingers ever in the way and at risk of being cut. Okay, slide that over. And we've got a nice shred. Now when I'm shredding lettuce and things like that, I like to use a serrated because you can get a real nice grip with the blade and it'll cut very, very thin lines. Now if we're going to make a big salad. We're going to make a chef salad or something of that nature. We're going to want big chunks of lettuce. Okay. Kind of give it rough cubes. Don't cut it too small. And with our lettuce, we want it to be a little random too. So when we break it apart, it'll stack well. Hey gang, I thought we'd finish up by doing a small watermelon carving. I found a little watermelon. I thought we'd take our paring knife Give some fun cuts, something simple, something random, not too technical. Uh, you know, our staffs aren't trained to, to carve eagles and things out of this. Actually, neither am I. But there's some simple things we can do to have a little fun with this. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to need two knives for this, our chef's knife and our paring knife. This will get the rough cuts off, this for the more detailed work. Now again, we're going to keep this simple, but what we want to do, cut a base so we can stand it up. Then, on a bias cut, we want to cut down. And so we have both halves available to work with. We'll cut another little face over here. So we have two pieces of melon to work out of. Now we're not going to scoop all the insides out of this. We're actually going to take, cut a square in here, cross again. 
and then go through with our smaller knife, cut in a circle around so we can cut the meats out of the watermelon. And let's come out in little cubes for us. And what we'll do is we'll just take this and put it right back into the watermelon after we've got it carved. It'll act as somewhat as a base for the edible portion. All right, I'm going to clean this up by hollowing it out just a little bit more. Okay, now we've got our clean shell. We'll set this product to the side. What we want to do is just come in, start making some cuts. I like to do just a simple one to get started when you're doing this new, new to this uh, technique. Just go in and make little zigzags. It's very attractive, simple to do. As you get more proficient, you can move into more elaborate pieces. Okay. And we could use this as a centerpiece for a fruit display. Take and cut our uh, cubes just a little bit smaller. You can see how we will just set it cascading out of our melon basket here. Again, this is very simple, but you can go as elaborate as you want as you get more proficient. And we certainly recommend trying new looks and concepts every chance you get.